Hello everyone, welcome to the DH Education Podcast, your program to be updated on the digital heritage education domain. I'm your host, Raul Gomez Hernandez, and I'm glad to be here with you. In the eighth episode of this podcast, we will talk with Nicole McNeely and Maria Trapsic about their experience developing and implementing, as facilitators, the European Impact Playbook, an impact toolkit developed by the European Foundation in collaboration with the Impact Community of the European Network Station. Stay to the end and discover some innovative projects and book recommendations to explore more around this topic. To have a social impact on someone is defined as having a strong effect. In culture, cultural heritage, and also in education, the social effect that produces an action has a powerful repercussion on how people perceive their daily life. So, designing an effective impact assessment strategy is something really important for all. It implies thinking about how to measure this effect, narrate it, and learn from it using tools and actions taken from previous case studies to know how your actions affect your surroundings. In this impact assessment, it's important to think about how the stakeholders are involved in. They should be part of all discussion, but this doesn't happen in all cases. In this process, not only stakeholders must be under control, but also resources used, activities made, and outputs in short term and outcomes in long term. The way all the quantitative analysis is taken and disposed to understandable mode is also important. For this reason, it's recommendable to use the most effective digital storytelling tools to involve all stakeholders in the post-project actions to improve what they do. An example of this strategy is the European Impact Playbook, a toolkit for digital heritage that can be very useful for doing an impact assessment of any digital heritage education resource and project for young people. After this introduction, let me propose some questions to discuss today with our speakers. How can we define a good impact assessment strategy? Is the European Impact Playbook created to use for being implemented on heritage education resources? This week, I would like to talk with Nicole McNeely and Maria Trapsic about it. Hello, Nicole and Maya. Thank you very much for coming to this podcast. Happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Exactly. Hi, and thank you for having us, indeed. Let me introduce yourself a bit to the audience. Nicole McNeely holds a Bachelor of Music from the University of Glasgow and an MA in Cultural Policy and Management from the City University of London. She works as an Impact Advisor at Europeana Foundation, being responsible for the development of Europeana's Impact Framework. This includes developing and revising the Europeana Impact Playbook, supporting how Europeana embeds impact assessment into its own practice and conducting impact assessments on Europeana's work. As well working for Europeana part-time, where she worked before as a responsible for the European education community, Nicole is a freelancer evaluation, researcher, advisor, and facilitator, working across different projects in the cultural and creative industries and in cultural relations. She's a collaborator in cultural solutions and is currently leading the development of a knowledge-serving strategy for DH Interrupts Network of EU Delegation Representatives responsible for culture around the world. Maria Trapsic holds an MA in Sociology for the University of Warsaw and a postgraduate diploma in Cultural Diplomacy from Collegium Civitas. She works as a project manager at the Polish National Film Archive Audiovisual Institute, FAINA, in charge of international cooperation, mostly focused on access and creative reuse of institutes digital collection for research, educational or artistic purposes. Maria is also the chair of the Fiat IFTA Value, US and Copyright Commission, and board member of the US Screen Foundation, and a member of the European Association Member Council. The European Impact Community is one of the European Network Association's six specialist communities. It supports a wider and diverse group of people on the practice of impact assessment and awareness, transferring knowledge and serving skills. Also, according to the Impact Community Work Plan 2021, it intends to be a force for change in strategic conversation among stakeholders like policymakers, funders, and a diverse range of cultural heritage institutions. To understand better the work of this professional community in the digital heritage sector, could you explain briefly to the audience how important is the impact assessment for the digital transformation of the cultural heritage sector? 
Thanks, Raul. Um, so I think there's so many different things packed into this question. First is the, you know, the importance of impact assessment for digital cultural heritage, what the value of impact assessment as a practice brings to cultural heritage. Um, one of the things that we're aiming to create is a shared narrative around the impact of digital cultural heritage. And we're doing this in collaboration with our community, our network, our stakeholders right across the EU, and also learning from those right across the world as well. Um, in terms of understanding that narrative, well, the impact of that, I think, is that we can really think about what role digital transformation of digital cultural heritage, what impact the digital transformation of cultural heritage can have in wider society. And it's about connecting to missions, organizational missions, and having that real social value um, that I think everyone is aiming for, I think, in, in, in the heritage sector, I think in the cultural sector, why, you know, there's a reason why we do this, um, and it's to make a difference um, for the people around us. Um, but digital transformation is also quite difficult to understand. We've recently defined this in Europeana. We've um, had some research that was published last year in the summer, um, which brought together different interpretations of digital transformation. It heard from different people what they thought digital transformation meant. And working also with our members council, we and our aggregators forum, we came to uh, our first working definition of digital transformation to help people think about what the impact of digital transformation is for them and also what it could be for society. Um, and in general, I think impact assessment within the context of digital transformation is important because it helps you to, the process that we've outlined in the playbook, helps you to think more about who your stakeholders are, what their needs might be, um, what your digital transformation might mean for them. Um, and importantly, it also brings your stakeholders together in your organization, for example, including maybe your funders as well, to think about actually what digital transformation means for you as a person, as a professional, as an organization, um, and to bring everyone together on the same page. And again, out of that, the, you know, the shared narrative comes back here. Um, but yeah, the, I think the, it's important because of that bigger question of why we're asking about digital transformation, trying to understand it better, trying to encourage digital transformation because we know we can have an impact on, on bigger society. It's so impressive how impact assessment can be so important in many ways. I agree with that sentence you said before. If you can measure something, you can understand it. I think digitalization is something really new for many organizations and any tool helping to measure these actions can help them to understand their social impact. In my opinion, impact assessment should be part of this process, like the task of designing, development or dissemination, as you can know how to engage better with your audience. And now, when these thousands are diversifying, it's more useful than ever, because you need to collect more information. Also, the relationship with your stakeholders like founders and policymakers is upgrading, and the institution need to imply the stakeholders in many ways as an essential part of their projects. I think to also to follow up on something you said, um, it's it's also yeah, absolutely about making the case for digital transformation as well, about measuring what you can measure. Not everything can be measured and not everything that matters can be measured, but you can start to make a case for increased investment in digital heritage and digital practices and tools and capacity building. If you start to demonstrate the impact that you think you're having, and if you have this impact orientated approach, you're much more likely to be able to have a convincing case for why you need um, uh, for why you need funding that fu policymakers and funders can respond to. Um, so I think that's another another important reason um, about convincing maybe even that upper management in your own organization or convincing your colleagues or anything like this. Um, absolutely, it's about uh, definitely reaching out to those stakeholders too. As a result of the work done by the European Foundation, in collaboration with the European Impact Community, it was launched in 2017, the European Impact Playbook, a collaborative ready-to-use toolkit that includes advices, recommendations and tools for putting in practice a full impact assessment in any cultural heritage project. It helps the user in the design process, the quantitative evaluation and the way it can be transformed into practical actions. After this introduction to the European Impact Playbook, could you explain more how it was developed and which type of content are included? So, 
coming back to what uh, Nicole has just said, I think we all in the cultural heritage sector had this urge to be able to better understand the impact of our actions, but we were missing out on the right tools and methodology. So there was this need to, to try to um, clarify, identify, I think even better, the, the, the process, the tools, the, the ways of approaching impact and how we can um, implement it or make it part of our daily processes. Because we all, I think uh, in, in our hearts, we, we know that the impact is there, that especially the social dimension of it, but it is, yeah, it, it is still difficult for us, I think, generally as a sector to, um, to identify it or implement it in our daily approach to really to, to see, okay, but what precisely am I achieving through this and that activity, through this and that project? Am I putting enough resources into this and that? So at some point back in time, I think, yeah, I, I wasn't also involved uh, at the very uh, beginning of the work on the impact framework uh, set up by Europeana, but uh, a community of, of experts led by the Europeana team gathered to discuss, okay, so exactly, how can we approach this challenge? How can we start thinking about having more impact focus uh, approach uh, implemented to our daily work and how can we support the community? And voila, here a few years later, there was the, uh, the, the, the impact playbook, which is to me, it is like a um, step-by-step -step guide to the process, to, to, to making impact uh, more part of your, uh, of your task, of how you approach projects, if you're project-based, but basically I think any activity that you can do, because Nicole was referring to the uh, digital transformation uh, area, uh, but um, actually I think you can implement this approach, this methodology to any project that you are addressing. But coming back to the to the, to the beginning and the team behind it. So the, as I said, the, the work has been led by the, and still is by the Europeana Foundation, but I think it is so impactful and to the point because it is it has been a collaborative effort. It has been um, reviewed uh, or uh, populated also by the members of the European network community and external experts. It is, it's been uh, greatly and uh, broadly discussed with, with different groups of stakeholders, exactly in order to make sure that this is a, a tool fit for purpose, because it is a tool and it has been, uh, it's divided into four chapters or as we call it phases, starting from, and this is also something role that you, I think, already listed. So there is a design thing, design process. So how you, how you think about the, uh, the impact of, of your uh, activities, how you, how you design it, how you make sure that the right people are around the table and that you're also approaching the needs of all the people, or all the stakeholders involved in the process. Then it's about the, the, the methodology understood as, as data gathering and uh, data analysis. And this is uh, qualitative versus, or not necessarily versus quantitative. So those two different approaches that also I think in the end have to uh, come in line or um, yeah, for us to just make sure that we understand the, the value of our actions uh, better. Then uh, it is about, okay, creating stories based on these findings. So how, how do we make most of the data that we gathered and the, 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 um, uh, the findings from the study. So how do we make sure that we, I would say sell the, the story right, and also to the, again, to the right stakeholders, because we talk differently with policymakers, we will talk differently with uh, stakeholders, representing funders, et cetera, et cetera, will uh, differently address the community, our peers, et cetera. They are all equally relevant, but they all also have different interests and different um needs and uh, we need to 
present different incentives for them to understand, to better understand the value of our work. And finally, the, uh, the, the final phase, the final step uh, that I personally uh, find super relevant, it's about evaluating your own approach. It's making sure it's, it's coming back to stage one and, uh, and checking, okay, how did I go? How did I do? How how did it go? Uh, have we has has our approach changed on the way? Maybe we have missed something. So it's really about seeing that the whole uh, um, the impact assessment as a process, which it is, of course, because you need time to be able to do it. You need the right set of uh, people, as I said. You need different steps to be able to evaluate the work, to understand the value of your uh, of your work, especially again in this in the social dimension of it. Um, and this is, I think, something we still haven't uh, said. Uh, that this is still work in progress, the work on the on the playbook. So we have two phases already released, tested, used. Uh, I, I'm happy to to say that I'm one of the vivid users of the of the phase one, especially in phase two two now, and it really has helped me so far to to have a let's say a clear start when when um, commencing a new project, new initiative. This really helps me set the, the structure of what I want to achieve, of what we want to achieve as an organization. Um, so uh, phase one, phase two are already there for you to use, to test. And uh, we, we really would like to invite you all to, to uh, visit the website, Europeana uh, Impact Community website and the Impact Playbook website. I'm sure you will share all the details, Raul, later on. Um, and with regard to phase three and four, uh, I think I can only give the floor to Nicole, who is the one working on it currently. Thank you, Maya. Yes, um, it's a really exciting month. Um, I'm working with a small group of people to develop the first draft, the beta version of um, phase three of the playbook. And we should have this ready by the end of the month so that we should be releasing this in May for testing. So over May and June, we'll be testing this with our colleagues, uh, with our network, with the community and um, with anyone who wants it, really. Um, and it's super exciting. Um, we're learning a lot. Um, we've had a really interesting process. If anybody wants to find out more about the playbook, we've had a series of webinars over the past five, six months that have gone through. Each webinar has taken each of the phases. And so, for example, in the webinar around phase three, we brought people together. We hadn't written phase three at this point, but we brought the people together who we thought might be able to help us. And they have everything they've shared has been super, super valuable. So we're able to think about data presentation and visualization, storytelling, storytelling, narrative building, things like this. It's been really super. And similarly for phase four, phase four is still um very much in development. We had a webinar about this and we brought together some really wonderful perspectives, including, for example, um, a representative of the Museums of Impact project, which I also recommend in terms of what Maya recommended, this self-evaluation is super important. And we'll be thinking about how we can take or, you know, learn from what they're doing and testing um, how we can build that in how their best how we can build their best principles into our playbook as well as Maya was mentioning this is a super collaborative effort everything that has been anything about the playbook has been collaborative from its very inception I think um, and so you see that in all aspects of um, even the methodology this very collaborative team methodology is, is collaborative as well wow it's amazing all the work done and the effort invested to create the Europeana Impact Playbook. As I know from the reports published on the Europeana Pro website, many institutions have served their case studies applying Phase 1 and Phase 2 of the Playbook. It's so grateful to see how many organizations think your Playbook is so useful. I believe it's because you work collaboratively with all your network to improve and adapt this toolkit to the real needs of the sector, taking into account all their opinions. When phase 3 and phase 4 will be released, I think it's going to be the most complete ready-to-use impact assessment strategy for the cultural sector. I um, I would also like to say that phase 2, um, we are also doing a very thorough review of phase 2. Just to pick up on something you mentioned, Raul, about usability. 
Um, we realised that we should really be improving phase two and how it's used. We don't have as much um, ways of how to um, how people should work with their colleagues to use it, for example. It's more like a guidebook um, with some resources than an actual workbook, a playbook. So um, we're actually doing this uh, review of phase two as well and working with the Impact Light Task Force that's part of the European community as well. Um, they're leading this um, uh, sort of thinking with a really interactive hat on how can we make this training you know, how can we support people to to train themselves and to train others in this methodology and to bring people along in the process? Of which you're part of that you're part of that task force as well. So uh, interesting plug there. Yes, I think about something people are really interested in, but they are not familiarized with it. So doing it in a simple and interactive way is a really good approach for getting them to understand what they are doing. For example, all the stakeholders involved in this project will realize how easy it is to implement impact assessment strategies for their own professional activities, thanks to the final methodology being developed. Yes, I, I fully agree. I would just like to add to, to that because indeed there is still a lot of work to be done in terms of, I would say, raising awareness about the, the, the impact, the value of impact, the value of discussing the impact of our work. And here you already mentioned that too, Ro, that the, the, the resources that were gathered uh, um, on the Europeana Pro um, site, referring to impact, all the uh, case studies coming from very different backgrounds. So showcasing uh, different, uh, different projects, with different uh, themes and focuses. I think that would be a great starting point for, uh, for, for a newbie, someone uh, new willing to, to get interested in, in, the, in the topic of, of discussing impact. Then all the resources, like the playbook itself, of course, but all the extra tools that support the, um, uh, the work with the, with the playbook all the lovely charts and uh, designs that are there to help you work and to help your team work with it. I think really that that could, um, could be a great starting point for everyone interested in that. And then hopefully, yes, sometime soon, the, the work of the uh, Impact Light Task Force will be in the open too, and it will add to that. And uh, it will help us gather an even bigger uh, community, not only of people interested in the team, but then real uh, practitioners and people eager, but also able to work uh, on impact in, in the CHI sector. COVID-19 pandemic has sped up the detailed information of the cultural heritage sector. For example, museum education changed their own way of teaching, turning to distant and blended learning methods, where museum educators create projects online in collaboration with teachers and students from home through new technological innovations. Focusing on the trend, do you think the European Impact Playbook is transversal enough to be applied in any other field as heritage education, whatever the size of the project is, and also to be applied along a whole process of working like the development process of a digital initiative, taking the sample of a MOOC, educational platform or educational game? Um, also, a very good question and a very relevant question that we talk about a lot at the moment, um, because we want the playbook to be used to support social change, to support social impact, to to make a difference in people's lives and to help others um, make really impactful work. Um, I should start by saying that the playbook um, comes from a has its origins in the balanced balanced value impacts model. Um, developed by Simon Tanner, and this gives it a digital heritage focus. But also, if you look at the core of the, the main tool that's part of the impact playbook, so the change pathway, you'll see that this is a logic model. And a logic model is a linear way of mapping a change that you expect to happen. And the logic model is used in every context I can think of. I use it in my own life if I need to think about why I'm doing something. I used it very recently, for example, um, thinking about uh, I'm from Northern Ireland. You can see the, the challenges we're having back there at the moment. And I'm a bit passionate believer in integrated education because we have segregated education. And I use the logic model to think, well, actually, what is the bigger value of working to promote integrated education? 
what is the value it can have on society. So, for example, in that educational context and social context, absolutely, this tool was very relevant. There will be some parts of the playbook which are very specific to cultural heritage. There will be some parts which are very, very specific to digital cultural heritage, but there will be some parts which are so universal in their themes that anyone can use this. Um, and so, you know, anywhere where you, it's difficult to articulate value, a lot of these are more qualitative, more, um, you know, culture, educate, like trying to, tr to track value in some areas can be really, really difficult. And tools like this are there to help. So there's lots of different areas which have that similar difficulty in expressing, articulating their own value. Um, also relating to digital education or digital heritage education, we have recently published two impact reports, which might be of interest to this um, community, uh, to listeners. Um, one was on Transcribathon, so Transcribathon, a tool where you transcribe um, uh, handwritten digital heritage into, into on, online, so you have a, a written, um, a digital version of this heritage, and also of the social return on investment of the European Education MOOC. So, you know, these are education contexts where we've applied the, um, they're related to her heritage, of course, but, you know, it's not that it's only relevant for heritage. There's a lot of crossover and a lot of applicability. And then if you look at the distinct phases, so phase one is this really, like I am, I'm so, I wasn't involved in the development of phase one. I, I joined around the end um, as it was being published towards the sort of last months. But I still look at phase one and I am astonished by how, um, how they've taken this process which can be so um, difficult and made it so intuitive and so step by step and this design impact design process walking through the change pathway thinking about your stakeholders is is applicable in any context on any context phase two is really focusing on methods data collection and of course that has its relevance in in also any context um, phase three, we're focusing on storytelling and storytelling is unique. So, or not unique, it's it's uh, uh, the other word, it's not unique. Um, it's everywhere. Storytelling is everything and everywhere and relevant, um, so relevant um, in, in uh, our lives at the moment. So, um, and of course, as Maya mentioned earlier, this phase four evaluation is super important. We should always be reflecting and evaluating on what we're doing, how we can improve and how we can make you know how we can make more impact in society so yes it's it's a very relevant tool and to, to close we're also holding um a research and impact event in may on the 10th and 11th of may this year so we're bringing together the research community in europeana and a wider research audience and the europeana impact community to think about well you know what can the research community learn from the playbook so absolutely we're using this already in a very transversal context so, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of potential, as Maya mentioned earlier, it's a lot about a lot of this is about raising the profile of the resource, showing that it's there. Um, and this is something we're working on through the community and uh, with our colleagues and with the wider network. Yes, it's really great to see how the European Impact Playbook can be useful in any domain and their tools can be applied in a traversal way. We have talked about the relevance of undertaking impact assessments in cultural heritage projects, how the European Impact Playbook can help institutions to make it easier. To end this talk, I would like to talk with you about how the European Impact Playbook can be applied in a practical way. So, could you tell the listeners which are your recommendations on the time of implementing an impact assessment strategy during the development process of educational resources through cultural heritage or any activity from the educational community? I would start with saying that no matter what kind of project you are involved in, but okay, let's focus on education, but actually any project that you're in and that you're thinking of, of, uh, of running, doing, creating, designing, um, you should, I think this is the way to, uh, to approach it. So you need to always start thinking uh, about, okay, so who is it for? Who am I going to do this with? So the stakeholders. And I think that the phase one, uh, we mentioned that already a number of times during this um, lovely chat that the stakeholders are all over uh, the place, so to say, that they are being involved from the stage one and that this is super relevant, that this is a collaborative 
collaborative effort, but this is also a, a collaborative effort in a sense that you are really being aware of all the uh, the key players uh, in uh, for the project or and in the project. Then it's always about okay, why am I doing this? At least it should be always about this. Asking ourselves the question, so okay, so why am I doing it? And then this comes back to the value that uh, Nicole has just uh, described and measuring the value of our actions and our ambitions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then it's about how and what. Yes. So these are all the, the the key core questions that we need to ask or we, we should be asking ourselves uh, before starting uh, a new project, a new initiative. So when you ask about the time, the right time from the very start, from the very beginning, this is, I think, when you can really use the, the, um, the phase one, the design phase of the playbook to help you design your project. When and. It can be a big one. You can be applying for a big European grant. Okay, education, then Erasmus Plus. It can be this one, but it's again, you will be asked in the in the form about okay, so why, with whom, for whom, how, etc. But it can also be your a new learning scenario that you want to create as an educator with your community, which even together co-created together with your students. Again, you need to understand why, for whom, and how. So I think really the scale, it's up to you. It's more about the approach again. And then it's uh, the, the playbook comes with a number, with a set of tools that can help you facilitate the process. And as Nicole earlier mentioned, yes, maybe you won't use them all. It Maybe it's about cherry picking. Maybe it's about... Uh, yeah, choosing your own pile of tools and the um, different uh, or a very specific set of, of tools and elements that are there. But I think this is also one of the biggest value of this, um, of the playbook, it's flexibility. You can really uh, align it with your needs, like tailor uh, it to, to what what the scale of your project is, but the ambition, but also how much uh, resources you have, how much time you have to be able to work on it, how big is your group, et cetera, et cetera. So I would say, like, again, just to wrap up, no, no matter, like, don't, don't be worried about the size or the, the scale of your project, just give it a try because it really can surprise you and open up the way you you suddenly start seeing the uh, the, the idea of a project that you're gonna have or that you already have, and that it may help you shape it in a in a surprising way. Those recommendations are so useful to understand how it can be open and attractive for many professions. The European Impact Playbook attraction lies in their non-formal and simple way of implementing it with tools like the Empathy Map, a collaborative tool that helps you gain a deeper insight into your stakeholders, or the chain pathway to organize and develop this strategy in a simple way. Yes, definitely. And I would say that coming back to one of uh, the points that you made uh, just now, that saying that people are not aware of uh, um, doing an impact assessment while doing it, I think this would be the, the, um, the best um, how do you say success indicator? I would say if we could ch turn this challenge of having an accidental work on impact into a really a targeted, a very um, yes, yeah, simply one of the tasks that you always have on your to-do list when uh, when working on something new on a project, and I think that would be the the biggest success of this this whole uh, discussion and all the work that has been done. On, on bringing more impact into our community as CHIs, but also educators, researchers. So anyone really willing to, uh, to better understand the value and the impact. I think that's a, a really beautiful point. Um, and I think what, um, what we're also still trying to learn to do in Europeana is embed this also in all of our own processes, like Maya is saying, 
Um, what I think is really important to say is that this is not an easy process, but it will become natural the more you do it. And that's what the playbook is for, to help it become natural and to help you do it. So um, it's really about embedding this in how you think exactly, as Maya said, at the very start of anything you want to do. Why are you doing it? And what change do you want to have? And if you ask those questions to yourself, then I think you're on a really good start. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk with you and know more about how impact assessment can be applied to digital heritage educational projects and resources. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. If you would like to learn more how to measure the social impact in museums, I recommend your report published by the Learning Museum Network project titled Report 3 Measuring Museum Impact, edited by Alessandro Bollo, Anna Nichols, Manuela Pereira, and Margarita Sani in 2013. To learn how to design an effective impact assessment strategy for digital education heritage, I suggest you to read the European Impact Playbook. Toolkit for Digital Heritage, developed by the European Foundation in collaboration with the European Network Station in 2017. It's still in the process of development and it will help you to design the strategy, measure the effect, narrate the results and learn from them. If you want to know European projects working on new ways of measuring impact in digital cultural heritage, I recommend you visit the Indices Project website. It aims to empower policymakers and decision makers in the cultural and creative industries to fully understand the social and economic impact of digitization in their sectors and address the needs for innovative reuse of cultural assets. Another powerful project is the SOFIA, the Social Platform for Holistic Heritage Impact Assessment Project. It aims to promote collective reflection within the cultural and political sector in Europe on the impact assessment and quality of intervention in European historical environment and cultural heritage at urban level. Thank you very much for being today with Nicole McNeely and Maria Trapsic and me in this podcast. Next week, a new expert will come and a new topic will be. Find all the resources from the topic we talk about in this podcast on the resource section of the DH Education blog. If you like this podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, share with your colleagues, follow the podcast on Spotify, iBox, or any platform you listen to, and follow the project on social media. See you next week. <laughs>